Hello and welcome to the Watchers TV, welcome at the Watchers Club and today we have the pleasure of having Max Busser here to talk about a special timepiece and this one actually symbolically speaking there's like a double, uh, well there's a resonance to w Watchers TV because more or less 10 years ago that's where we launched Watchers TV and the, uh, the report we did at the time on the LM1 uh, was actually one of our first video report. I sincerely didn't dare to look at it, but it could be quite a funny one. So Max, welcome and uh, congratulations on this new piece. But let's go back a little bit before in time and on this uh, LM collection. What did it change for you and what for the brand? Thanks, Marc Corné, and happy anniversary also. Um, and I remember that that film, <laughs> the LM1 film. I remember it was like 45 degrees centigrade, and I was sweating like crazy while you were filming me. I, that I remember. Um, what has LM changed to MBNF? Uh, it's changed enormously. But I didn't realize that when I was doing it. As I've actually been telling people, uh, LM originally was not supposed to be. It was supposed to be an HM. And I was trying to do an HM with a balance wheel and finally um, I thought, okay, I just can't manage to do this. And I did a round watch and everybody in my team would push back. It's like, no, no, we don't want that. This is not MBNF. So I had to battle with my team. And I was very scared of the perception. I think what, what scared me the most was that we, the crazy rebels doing 3D kinetic art, people would think that we'd sold out. Uh-huh, so you're going commercial, huh? You're doing a round watch, huh? Yeah, I want to make some money, eh? And um, it's interesting because for many, many years, up to about two years ago, everybody in the industry still thought that LM was the biggest part of our revenue, but it was always the smallest part. HMs have always been three quarters of our, of our revenue was the HMs and LMs was a very small part. And we often thought that's because there's so much choice out there in round watches that it's understandable that there's no choice in, in kinetic art pieces, more or less, with our friends from Overwork and a few others. But LMs, you've got so much competition. Um, I think what it really did for us is it gave us the legitimacy we were missing. Because before LM1, a lot of people in the watch world, aficionados, industry, looked at our HMs and looked at them as toys. And if you want the inner Godzilla of mine to come out, you call one of my pieces a toy because they're <laughs> insane pieces of engineering. They're insane works of uh, mechanics and the fan finish, etc., etc. And as soon as LM came out, you had millions of specialists who were like, oh, yeah, I know watch and Take the watch. And luckily, not only was it really super innovative with the flying balance wheel and other features, but thanks to the work of Kari Rutilainen, the finishing was absolutely right up there on the tip of the pyramid. And so people went, oh, these guys actually do know watchmaking. I think it may have reassured a certain amount of, of, of uh, followers that actually we know what we're doing, <laughs> which I think we, we, we did know, but I have to give an enormous credit to Kari with him, we brought the brand up here in hand finishing. I think we were not bad, uh -huh. but we went to superlative thanks to him. And, uh, and so it brought that legitimacy, it brought an enhanced quality of our hand finishing, and um, it brought a lot of uh, confusion also. Because suddenly, you've got a brand which on one side does these crazy 3D kinetic art pieces, and on the other does, more or less, even though they've got a twist, classic watches. And no brand does that. Nobody does that. So we became a, a schizophrenic brand and I'm a schizophrenic creator and human beings need certainties. They need to, oh, this, they need to put you in boxes. This has to go in that box, that goes in that box. And suddenly we don't know which box to put us. And then you had the LM clients and you had the HM clients and you had the guys who are like both. And, and no, everybody's very confused. But honestly, uh, I'm going to say I don't care because I just love what I do. And it gives me um, a canvas. It gives me two canvases I can work with. That's, most artists, creators have one canvas and that they develop. I've got two I can actually develop, maybe three or four soon. Uh, and that, that's the, the luxury I gave myself. 
Well, I can imagine that indeed on the creative side, it must be really interesting to be able to jump from one to, to the other. Uh, but now, so 10 year and you're coming with a special uh, version because I know that indeed with the LM1, it was discontinued, but you wanted to carry it a little bit further. And so you took it, I mean, a blank sheet of paper and let's start all over again. Give us some details about that. Actually, it wasn't really a blank sheet of paper because <laughs> Because what we did is that we took all the fundamentals of LM1, which is the, the, the foundation piece of Legacy Machine. So if you do an anniversary, the best, I think for me, was to take the foundation piece and rework it. And just not modify it. We really, as we always say, we deconstructed it and then we reconstructed it completely much more into 3D. It's, it's LM1 on steroids. It's LM1 mm, crazy. It's LM1 much more intense. Now, it'll be way more, maybe too intense maybe for a few people, but that's where I wanted to go. So, the fundamentals are what? A flying balance wheel, two time zones completely independent, a vertical power reserve. You take that recipe, you put it in the shaker, add a lot of vitamins, and boom, you get that. So, three barrels instead of one. So you go from 45 hours power reserve to seven days. What was kind of the reason behind that? Um, because of the power reserve indicator. Okay, yeah. So um, I, I, I had this idea, or we had this idea, of the, the 3D power reserve indicator, which was not only 3D, but could actually also rotate. And, uh, and so let's try and make it... it actually, <laughs> there, was a, there was an ad when I was a kid for Balzen, which are German biscuit makers, and there was a, a gentleman at Balzen in the ads who would always, it's a Monsieur Plus, and he would always, when there was a little bit more ch uh, chocolate, he would push the people to put more chocolate and, and more nuts and more this. It was that. I was the Monsieur Plus. I was the Mr. <laughs> pushing to do more. If it's, it's, if it's one barrel, we go to three barrels. If it's a flying balance wheel, we're going to make it much higher, and actually it's more or less a split escapement in the fact of the height. Yeah, the, the height is really spectacular. I mean. uh, the dials which we'd experimented on flying T and Thunderdome, boom, you go up 50 degrees, the conical gears, you actually can see them, which you can't see them on the two other pieces. If you, you turn your, your LMX round, you can see the conical gears, it's really amazing. And of course, this 3D um, uh, power res reserve indicator, which rotates also on itself. And on top of that, if you look at the piece, it's so watchmaking, because we took wheels and bridges, which were at the back normally, and put them on the front seems easy the way I see it, but we actually constructed it. So you've got these beautiful hand-polished uh, bridges. I love with those the, little they're, bridges. They're so beautiful, yeah, they're with these really enormous nice. rose gold chatonnet yeah. in them, and which are holding the minute uh, wheels of each time zone. And of course, the, the, the escapement in front with that really cool bridge. And so you put all of that, and you've got something which is maybe what I would have created uh, 10 years ago if I had been me today. You see what I mean? Yeah, that, that's that's yeah. what it is. It's something which is very new for me. I've always been looking forward, always creating the next step, getting out of my comfort zone. And suddenly I've got this opportunity of actually going to revisit something I did in the past, which is not at all a way I function. I never look back. I, uh, I'm, I don't look at old photos. I don't look at, I've never been that sort of person. But suddenly I've got this opportunity to, okay, you did that 10 years ago. I still think it's a beautiful piece, absolutely beautiful piece. Um, but can I go a little bit nuts on it? Let's try. And so now I've got a, I've got a three schizophrenic way of doing it. I've got HMs, I've got LMs, and now I've got revival pieces. Frog X last year, LMX this year. So <laughs> I, am, I am on all cylinders <laughs> creating all sorts of different things. It's cool. It's cool. A huge product matrix. Yeah, I mean, look, honestly, I, I don't even understand what we're doing. Uh, if I look at the board with all the different pieces and, and the team says, oh, now we have to put this one this year and that one that year, I'm like, okay, whatever. I mean, I, I just create them now. And the team says, no, honestly, Max, we should do that in 2023 and that one in 25. I'm like, if you want to, okay. As long as it sees, it sees life, I'm happy. All right. So concretely, and to summarize or to finish this uh, video, what uh, versions are you coming up with? 
All right, so um, the launch edition is uh, 18 pieces in red gold with the black uh, base plate and uh, 33 in titanium with the green base plate, which is actually green, but if you look at the films and the photos, yeah. <laughs> they're either blue or purple. Them, yeah. And we were like, oh my God, especially the film, like it, it looks blue. Why is it blue? <laughs> because the, the green CVD, which CVD is actually basically uh, um, atoms that you, you, you put ions, you put on, um, on, a, on a surface, actually react differently to light. So I call it a, a peacock green because it goes from green to blue to purple. So anyway, 18 in red gold, 33 in titanium, but we're only going to craft more or less 25 movements a year. So it's going to take us two years to do this launch edition. The idea is that with 25 movements a year, it'll be very difficult to find. And um, I think something as, uh, as important as an anniversary piece uh, should not be too easy to get their hands on. Very true. Good. Well, thank you very much for being here. Uh, best of luck with uh, this uh, launch and uh, see you in 10 years, probably before that, but uh, congrats. Thanks. Thanks for watching and Viva Watch Me! Well, actually, you have to say Viva Watchmaking too. I'm very sorry. Where, where do I look? You look there. Look there. Okay. Viva Watchmaking. There you go. Thank you very much. See you soon. <laughs>